Hello, welcome back to Boston This week's incredulous installment will feature commentary from Comrade Scott, Ellie, Sarah, and myself. We discuss how the IDF has finally killed enough Palestinians to evoke the honesty of some pundits. How big business is big mad. How the CDC is behaving like the CIA. And how you can get a side of fries with that vaccine. We move on to the Cali Condor clusterfuck. Calculate the cost of carnage before dissecting woke culture and finally finding out what sound a giraffe makes. Please do us a favor, share this content to yourself a favor, enjoy your <laughs> Warren's dork ass nerd bullshit uh, appealed to dork ass nerds, but somehow didn't appeal beyond that group. Weird. The- <laughs> okay oh we started <laughs> <laughs> when did we start I th- we just started oh okay that's cool come on down folks to a place we like to call jupiter where we i create life <laughs> where we create life yes that's good, good for them yes Whoever so we're are. we're short of joe oh and Who's i just echoing? heard myself who's echoing ellie um <laughs> is it me but but pair song it's probably by person who's I'm echoing in. Um, How about now? Yeah. Is that better? What did you do? Anyways. Literally, I have to put this. Really? No. Anyways. No. Anyways. Uh, yeah, so we're down to Joe. So we're Joe-less. So we're going to be joe off. Uh, I'm going to be trying to Joe off to my best Joe. And the first story we're going to open up with is, of course, the continued brutalization of the Palestinians by the Israeli government. But more importantly, how... There seems to be kind of like a, a bit of a shift in the narrative where like the media is actually kind of talking about this in a more honest way, where it isn't just it isn't hand waving. It isn't just complete tacit uh, and enthusiastic, Whoa. often uh, approval of what the Israeli government is doing. Like like John Oliver actually had a segment that was very honest about this, which like shows that like things are finally shifting, which is good. It doesn't mean that like it's going to get like fixed right away. Like there's still a fight to be had, which will probably last many years, but it's, it's good to see that there's a shift in the narrative. Maybe. It's good to see. I am recording. <laughs> Hi, Carlene. Sorry. More news, Carlene is, needs some technical I don't know what she's help. She's <laughs> talking to Smudge a lot. I don't oh. know. What... <laughs> uh, in news, uh, Smudge and Carlene have a very close relationship. Well, obviously. Yeah. Smudge is cool. She is cool, cat. Have you ever seen that? Have we ever even seen them in the same place? Maybe the same person. It's true. <laughs> Jesse, are they there together in front of you right now? <laughs> yeah, we have to uh, believe. Can neither yes, confirm nor deny. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just Carly making both the human noises and also the cat noises. <laughs> All of the Jesse's pictures, just like, looking on. All of her Facebook pictures of Smudge were secretly like selfies. <laughs> Oh no! It's like that guy, the, the Zoom lawyer, who was like, "I'm oh, no, I'm not actually a cat," or whatever. <laughs> that was. Oh yeah, the lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, John Anyways. Oliver is probably <laughs> maybe the least shitty of the liberal media people. I don't know. I used to watch him a lot. I haven't been watching him lately. Yeah, I haven't watched this segment in a while. I hadn't either, but when I did that Uyghur deep dive, <laughs> I watched his entire segment on the Uyghurs. So. Huh. Was, uh, was like, he? Like I said, I watched a lot of shit that I didn't want to watch, but <laughs> oh. it actually I, it wasn't too bad. Like he surprises me because it's it's an HBO show, so I just assume the politics are going to be shit. But yeah, so he, I don't likes know, he, clear, to, uh, he clears that HBO box. is owned by Warner Media. He likes to stick it to Business Daddy a lot. I enjoy that. Well, he he doesn't have like bad politics. He just has. It's like he can't really take. He can't really be serious about how to solve problems because the show is about like doing quirky awareness campaigns that involve yeah. like I don't know making a giant cake or like <laughs> Ex- a t-shirt fighting, of a lung, like, like yeah. fighting a Chinese mascot or something, like yeah. blowing up a giant 
thing that says 2020. Oh, hell yeah. That, that really, that revolutionized. I actually that did was, enjoy that one, yeah. I mean, yeah, but like all the problems that happened in 2020 stopped after you did that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That did solve yeah. the whole. It was extremely effective. Yeah. Damn. Stumped by Oliver again. God damn it. <laughs> but yeah, you love to see it. You love to see that uh, even milk toast uh, progressives are starting to see the truth, see the light. And hopefully we can end this oppression within our lifetimes. Uh, that is a worthy goal to aim for, I believe. What else happened, Scott? Okay, well, there's, there's uh, Biden is trying to pass a big tax hike on businesses, on the wealthy. And of course, corporations are, are they got their knives out. They're trying to chip away and they're trying to stop it. This is basically, he's trying to undo the, the Trump tax bill. And there actually is a lot of good allocation of funds to like, like families and like communities that need money. But, you know, again, it's, it's, it's not going to be like some new deal. It's not that bad, but whenever the corporate bottom line is, is threatened in this bill, it's a lot of small business as well, which, uh, you know, how I feel about small business tyrants, you know, you kind of love to see it a little bit. You kind of don't because it might be screwing over good people as well. But yeah, whenever the bottom line is threatened, they come out with their knives and that's what they're doing now. It's not really much the story. Joe wanted me to talk about it. I talked oh. about it. Someone's Uh-oh. been watching <laughs> Knives Out. What was that? What was that? Breaking news. <laughs> uh, next to me, there's like a Febreze. Um, <laughs> but there's not actually Febreze in it. It's just like soapy water in the Febreze container. But I knocked it over. So now you have soapy water all of your four? No, nothing bad happened. I just made a noise. Oh, it's not like open. Okay, I see. Well, that's good. Did no. that make you become wet on the outside? <laughs> or on the inside. <laughs> right. You know, I think the rain is actually a lot like communism. When you think about it, at first it sounds really nice, but once you actually get out into it, it is even better! <laughs> As you uh, wanted to get wet. Attributed to Lenin. Circa 1922. Yeah. Colorized. <laughs> we went back and colorized this footage. <laughs> All right. We colorized this audio footage. <laughs> and the last bit of news uh, is that the fucking CDC is fucking with us in terms of like, with like how the fuck, like, my whole, like, no shit, this shit bothers me. Like, like, like. Like, 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 psychotic, psychotic, fucking, like, 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 like psychotic, 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 psychotic. The CDC is starting to feel like some fucking capitalist psyop where they're like, wear, like, you don't have to wear your mask anymore. And then the next day they're like, wait, oh, hold up. No way you do. And then it's like, <laughs> and then like every state is like fucking lifting their fucking mandate, including Massachusetts, Massachusetts mask mandate will be lifted on May 29th. But more importantly, like Texas next week going into effect is this fucking thing where it's going to be illegal for business to ask someone to wear a mask. And that's like so fucking psychotic. Like this shit is psychotic. Um, the fucking little Satan's little helpers that are trying to get fucking like capitalism back into, into full swing and things like they're really like chomping at the bit. Like they're thirsty for blood and it's disgusting and it's psychotic. And on, on top of this is that fucking, I work for Starbucks and Starbucks is a company that fucking, has ties to the Israeli government. So, like, I'm all fucking... F- Everything is causing me stress right now. I love my life. So, my whole thing is, like, I think, like, we should get to a point where we have, like, a certain number of, like, where we know, like, 90% of people are, like, vaccinated or something. And then you can start lifting the mask mandate. This is... I don't know. Our country's insane. If you're going to fucking do this, then I'm sorry. The alternative is you have to have fucking, like, vaccination passports or something. Like, this is just... I see another spike coming, and I'm not happy about it, because I might be included in that. So, hey. But I am vaccinated, but you never know. Maybe there's a new variant, and it just fucking eats your face. The COVID face eater. I don't know. Yeah, the face eater. <laughs> COVID-21. It, like, it just hits you, and then your face becomes a giant mouth. That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a meme that was like, it was like a Simon Says game, or whatever. Yes. Maybe it's just called Simon. And I posted it's like, that, you know, yeah. Yeah, you both. That's probably why I saw it. Yeah, it's like the CDC says, and then every single button is like, wear your mask. Like, don't wear your mask. Wear it in this situation. Don't you know that it's, it's okay? Kind of thing. Oh, like like the um the the Bop it game. 
I like how at, yes, <laughs> I kind of like pop it. I like how at Starbucks they just have signs that show like. Don't get me started with Starbucks bullshit, but yeah. <laughs> It's like slaves, like gathering beans, and it's like fair trade, wholesomely, wholesomely sourced from local farming operations. Yeah, it's like, it's like <laughs> luckily These because that, that's, that's, that's like a today. Colombian slave. Like, yeah, it's fucked up right there. Yeah, luckily because I work on the waterfront, all our art is nautical themed and have no pictures of fucking coffee beans anywhere. I love it. It's the one thing that I like about my store. About this store, my store. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sorry. Our store. Fuck off. <laughs> I take no allegiance or, or or they don't go here basically. I'm not allegiance I'm not aligned with Starbucks. Uh, <laughs> don't fire me. Don't fire him. Going back to Scott's original comment, I was gonna say that I had heard that um several states were doing some some sort of stuff to incentivize people to get vaccinated. I think like Ohio has like basically like a lottery system set up where they have five million dollars, like one million dollar each to f- to five people, and you you're entered to win if you get vaccinated. And I think like today they had like their highest number of uh, vaccines administered in like weeks because of that. I'm totally okay with incentives and psychological manipulation to get people to do the right thing. Oh, me and too. And those yeah. yeah, those programs have been really successful. So. Yeah, I saw something about New York City and French fries, but I didn't actually read that article, so it could be false. You get French fries if you get vaccinated in New York? You know what? I'll Google it right now. Yeah, That sounds rad, though. <laughs> when I when I got vaccinated at the High End Convention Center, I got a little piece of paper that said that I could get, it had like some discounts at certain places at the Prudential, like $3 off of your Boston Duck Tours ticket. <laughs> Uh, yeah. $15 off of Madewell purchase. Uh, really? All I got was a fucking... <laughs> all I got um, was a button. Well, to yeah. be fair... Those motherfuckers... It, are, oh, man. I can't really right, get right. back to the Prudential now, because the annoying part was is that they gave you a two-hour like validated parking, which is great, but I, I came at the wrong time, clearly, because I wasn't aware that everything in like Back Bay closes at like 7 p.m. Oh, uh-huh. like, yeah. Or I don't. It's just like, oh, okay. I can't do anything now. All right, really. Oh, that's really I stupid. Go. Yeah, I relate. I always come at the wrong time. I went to yeah, assembly and they had like their parking garage, <laughs> and you could just Is park for free. Jesse? And fine. Yes. Um, okay. Thank you. I was like, <laughs> I got when I when Youth on Fire is pretty cool. Like, I know that you you can't go there if you're over 25. I think, but like, I went there with my ex. And I got HIV tested, and they gave me a CVS gift card. That was pretty cool. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's some social engineering right there. Well, they do, like, good harm reduction shit. We need more of that. They have, yeah. like, they have clean kits. I guess Cambridge is transitioning back into, what is it, like, observe, like, uh, what is that called? Am I fucking good? <sighs> I don't do know. You, you, sh- you, do, you do you do you do heroin in front of somebody, so they oh supervised consumption. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, that's <laughs> I don't totally know why. Like you just doing something in front of somebody. I know, it, it's may, just like, maybe it's summer. I I can't remember if it was Cambridge some place or is somewhere. Doing that. It was somewhere. Yeah, it was. I don't think it was Somerville because I think I, I think somewhere it was Cambridge. Bill. I don't know why. Somewhere I think Bill. it might have been Cambridge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> somewhere. I mean, oh, regardless. Gosh. If you live in New York City and you get a you get vaccinated, you can get a voucher for free French fries, but you have to buy Ooh. a burger or sandwich first. You gotta go to Shake Shack. You gotta go to Shake Shack and buy a burger or sandwich, and then you can. I get went to sandwich. Shake Shack after the Palestine demo. <laughs> I don't know why that was funny. So how pricey are them burgers? Is this a deal that it's worth it for the New Yorker? Uh <laughs> the New Yorker. I don't know. Like, I feel like if you get the double, it's worth it. But all right, you hear that, New Yorkers? If you listen, get the double. We hear there's a, bu- a burger component to this. Yes, that's what he said. Yeah, this is a yes. burger podcast. I actually now. googled the Shake Shack menu because <laughs> oh I my God, oh I want my God. It so badly. This is a Smash Burger podcast because I don't eat meat, and they have black bean burgers. And I don't know the if Shake I've Shack. Ever not, this is becoming a burger podcast. Does Shake Shack not have black bean burgers? I, I'm looking at the shroom burger, but I didn't realize that the entire fucking thing was shroom. I thought it was a burger with mushroom. Oh, oh no, shit. it is a shroom burger. Yeah, it's a whole mushroom. 
I would eat that. That's legit. I would too. But well, there we go. I wasn't about to pay ten bucks for it. Oh shit! Is it ten dollars? They don't tell you on the website. That's bullshit. You can't. Oh, they have for dogs. What can you get for dogs? Oh my you god. Get... Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can get a bunch of dog biscuits, or you can get a little thing of dog biscuits and vanilla custard for your dog. Cool. Oh, check check. Summer. It is Somerville. Give us money, Shake oh. Check. Oh, it is. Pardon. Okay. I f- it made sense, but for some reason, I don't know why. I, I saw something posting about it, and I, I, for some reason, I thought it was Cambridge, but, I mean, Somerville probably is the more... Yeah, Somerville, know, that makes more sense. Somerville has the highest representation by percentage of socialists in the immediate <laughs> area. Probably anywhere in the country, to be honest. <laughs> they don't know if it's- I'm just going to leave this pause cool. in, in <laughs> Yeah, what just happened? Everyone <laughs> <laughs> just went quiet. What just happened, guys? <laughs> I was taking a... I was drinking some water, so I muted myself. So keep I'm almost really drinking noise. my dip spit. Ew. Your what? Hold on. It's dip spit. It's from Ew. dipping. It's when you spit. I know. Yeah. I know. My boyfriend's in the army. I know what that <laughs> is. <laughs> God. Big in the army? Okay. Oh, yeah. They... It's fucking gross. I mean, I haven't actually seen it myself personally, but I've heard I've heard tell of it. My boyfriend can do a really good imitation of somebody doing it, and it's just like, ugh. Like, I don't know. I don't... Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna <laughs> think about something else now. We love a good spittoon. <laughs> spittoon. I'm not, saying, I'm not trying to think about anybody doing that. I was just remembering. I was like, I oh. That word. Spittoon. Jesse, we're gonna get you a spittoon. So that you can spit it. Old, it. old iron cast spittoon. You spit into it. When you get, when you lose your leg. Oh, we need the, we need the, you need a sound. In the, in the stampede, you lose your legs. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, uh, <laughs> you need to get the soundboard to add like that kind of noise. Yeah. What? Like a, that a, a, a spittoon? Like yeah, that's a spittoon. Oh. If we you know? Know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I always think of fucking Hey Arnold with like Stinky and his grandpa <laughs> or whatever, like sitting on the porch toothless, spitting in the bucket. Oh, Stinky. Oh, shit. All right. You who soda. <laughs> Just drank it. <laughs> I gotta go uh, back and watch that whole show. Jesse, was there any sort of segment you wanted to dis- or anything you wanted to discuss this week? Uh, I'll plug the menagerie. We currently yeah, do it. have, I think I have uh, three more sections of On Practice queued up. So if you haven't checked out the Marxist Menagerie, I'm reading Mao's On Practice in full. I mean, I actually read the whole thing already, but you're not a patron, so you wouldn't know that. Would you? Ironically, yes you would, because I released On Practice a while ago. I meant to say On Contradiction, so... We can just pretend. More oh. like mom practice. Yeah. We <laughs> 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 practice being a mom. Well, that's right. the episode, Dave. <laughs> oh, I would say mom, like you know, like yes. milf, like mom, like doing your mom, you know, like what? Do doing your what? mom. <laughs> like you're, sure. You're, you're, you're and then you explained <laughs> the joke, and it right. got worse. <laughs> I don't know if it made no sense or if you're just like, haha. That's what I always think when I think about mouse and tongue. Being a mom. I go immediately <laughs> to doing your mom. That's <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a logical it's on practice. It's one See, degree of separation. Two, mm-hmm. well, two degrees of separation, but yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's right. All right, we gotta we we kind of have to follow up this this weird spiral into uh, interesting ancestral conversation with uh, what what can we, can we not make up? What goes on, but, but person? Well, what's, what's... You, you you all. <laughs> I don't know if I've listened to that song. I think only Hava has been listening to that song. Anyway, here's a story about birds. I've listened to the song. Jeez, why? Anyway. This is, yeah, because she sent it to you. This is uh, some bird content for oh. you. Uh, bird, big, basically, big takes place in California where there are some condors, which you may know are 
extremely uh, endangered. There are only about 200 of them that are alive. Really? They live in the wild. That sucks. I These know, guys right? Rule. Wait a second. They're There's really only cool. 200 condors total. They're, California condors. Yeah. And that maybe sucks. there's other condors, but it's, yeah, the California condors Corn are. Corn. <laughs> they are. <laughs> it's get some corn eggs. <laughs> some corn, corn, corn eggs. And uh, yeah, so there's 200 of these corn eggs, and uh, about 20 of them are trashing this woman's house. <laughs> 10% of alive condors are at this woman, uh, Cindy <laughs> Michael's house. She lives in Tehachapi, California, which I don't know where that is. It's probably in like Southern California. These pictures make it look like every other part of California that I've ever been to, so I have no idea. But yeah, she says uh, one tenth of them are having a nonstop party at Cindy Mickle's house. She says, We don't know where these all came from, but somewhere around 20 of them just decided to show up and, and really seem to take a shining to my mom's house, particularly her deck and roof. And the shining. Her daughter talking about that. She says they're mostly just hanging out and having fun. And uh, they <laughs> they have spent the last week or so knocking over plants and lawn ornaments, leaving claw marks on the deck, and defecating all over the roof. <laughs> well, just well, that's just going to make the roofs um, more impenetrable. So I mean, honestly, yeah, like they're perfect. just doing their part. Yeah. Maybe like the bird, like the bird poop is like gonna be white, right? So it's gonna like you know reflect the sun. It's gonna be more. Ooh, that's a, you know what? That's probably true. And in a climate like California, uh-huh. never know how hot it's gonna get. So that's saving on energy costs. Yeah, I presume. Unless yeah. they have solar panels on their roof, in that case, it's gonna be worse. <laughs> Apparently, also, uh, I don't know. You see these pictures here? It looks like pretty much every one of these condors is tagged. The wildlife people do that to keep an eye on them. So they, they're all just like these giant ass vulturey looking birds. And they have like these festive little numbers on their wings. <laughs> like every one of them has. So what do you think she did? I don't know. What do you think she did to these condors? <laughs> well, apparently her mo- uh, this woman is an animal lover who usually <laughs> enjoys watching the condors fly overhead. And uh, maybe they just sensed that she loved them. and. Uh, they were like, and now they're just like, oh, let us in, <laughs> taking over. Do condors eat meat, or like, do they? Are they like? Oh. You know, do they like? No, I mean like, but like, okay, wait, 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 wait like, do, are they like? Like, do they eat human they, flesh? Like, carrion? <laughs> like, do they like eat like dead bodies? Yeah, they eat meat. They're like. What I'm proposing is that perhaps yeah. this lady has actually killed someone, and she's hiding yeah. a dead body in her house while she's trying to figure out how to hide it, and the condors can sense it, and they're trying to get inside the house because they want to eat it. They can sense <laughs> it? Yeah, no, they do. They eat dead carcasses. Okay, I was yeah. just checking. Yeah. Dead carcasses. That's a weird phrase. Anyways. <laughs> they eat live carcasses. Body. Live carcasses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah. Uh, it's just me and my live carcass sitting here doing this. You know, just uh, just existing Isn't here. that what we all are? On the right-hand column, like for me anyway, it says popular now in radio. And then the second item yeah. is just a lowercase <laughs> It's just a lowercase Yeah, it just Q. says Q. <laughs> that reminds yeah. me of the... <laughs> wait, let me just go find this right now. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What is it? That, that reminds yeah. me uh, somewhat of... Wait, where... Uh, yeah, that just. <laughs> you can't click it already. <laughs> it just. <laughs> oh, it's just there. Yeah, this is a Canadian <laughs> website. This is the CBC. Uh, CBC nice. Radio. I chose this this version of the story because it was the only one I had seen where they had uh, in the headline that ten percent of the condors that exist are <laughs> trashing this one's house. This reminds me of that thing I share with you guys that. Um, if you look at this website for the this florist in in Holbrook, Massachusetts. You just look at it as just normal stuff, but like inexplicably along like the to go to their flower delivery page and it, on the right column of it, it for some reason has a Viagra ad in uh like or or Cialis, I can't really tell, like in Italian. It's oh, like that's a, right. It's like a fake first hand account. Yeah. Too. It's not like like it doesn't <laughs> like read an like ad. an ad. It reads like a badly typed blog post yeah it's like they were they they meant to they they just have one they they just have one 
domain that they've bought and they have to use it both simultaneously for like their flower business and also for like their like erectile dysfunction blog. Yeah, they sell a dick pills to Italians and flowers to Americans. <laughs> or maybe yeah, it's that's like, the aquarium. that's how you do it. Maybe buying you flowers in <laughs> That's called the horizontal integration. <laughs> <laughs> or perhaps That's where the term deflower came from. Yes. I it's it literally says it in the name. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, but <laughs> I want to continue because I was saying is that like maybe in Italy buying flowers is on the same level as buying dick pills here, where it's like vaguely funny and it's a um, romantic gesture. I mean, I, <laughs> honey, I got you your sure. dick pills. <laughs> I got you a whole bouquet, bouquet of dick pills. Yeah, the great oh, thing is yeah. that it's in the exact same font as the rest of the actual copy on this web page. So it looks like it should be there. What if this is from... Uh, never mind, I'm going to look into this more. Talk about something else. I'm going to look at this. <laughs> All right. Well, condors. They're weird. Yeah. <laughs> Burb. Uh, Burb. Burb. I'm like not a kid. I'm like the worst bird enthusiast. When Carlene and I went to the zoo, the only thing we didn't look at was the birds. Oh, fuck uh, them. Uh, if I Can't forget what you see at the zoo. zoo. Which, which Literally area? everything else. Say an animal. That you Red saw panda, that. camel. We saw the different kinds of ducks. We saw <laughs> primates. Those are birds. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't the bird exit. It was like, okay, so like they like sprung that on us because I thought I was going to be seeing some like tropical shit. And it, <clears throat> it was just ducks. Oh. So oh. that was, oh, and we we did, we Fuck saw ducks. the pe- we saw the peacock, but that was also by accident because that peacock wanders aimlessly around the zoo. So. <laughs> yeah, that's I the thing peacocks. with zoos and peacocks. Like the one by my sister's house, they, they just let him chill wherever he wants and he just goes around. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I was going to tell him what to do. Uh-uh. When I grew up in um, Cincinnati, Ohio, we went to the Cincinnati Zoo and there would be like just the peacocks just chilling like out with like the people walking around. And then one of the dudes would be like, oh man, I got to... I got to fucking strut my shit. And then he would just go, but the, 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 you know, and like put his, like, <laughs> it sounds like he's shooting at people. <laughs> what I mean is, you know, that noise they kind of make when they like fluff out their, their tail feathers and they display the, the thingy. Yeah. It's, it's cool. I, kid me was like, that is the coolest shit. I think it would be even cooler if the peacock, Never mind. Okay. What? I was just thinking about if a peacock had like a Mac 10. I don't need to expand on that joke. You can do the rest in your head. I think my favorite birds in that in that um, zoo were the the flamingos. I really like the flamingos. The thing my mom always said at the zoo is that when I were I was that age, I I guess I had learned how to say M before F, so I just called them the Mingos. <laughs> Hell yeah, Mingos. I really, really I really liked the. The, the flamingos are my favorite currently. My first word was doggle, which isn't a word. Doggle. doggle. Oh, I love it. That's cute. It, it, meant, it meant motorcycle. And then my, <laughs> and then my, my second word was bope, which, oh, okay. which bope. meant boat. Bope. What is, what's happening at the end? Like, I don't know. It sounded like he was being tortured, and I was... <laughs> I don't know. I didn't like that one. <laughs> Some other cool shit that I've seen at the zoo, though. Anteater. Oh. Yeah. Very, it's, cool. like, it's like more ostentatious than I was expecting. Um, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it just has a lot of, like, hair and is kind of prances around. Like, I thought they were sort of slow and, like... Uh, oh, Okay. You know, like persnickety and stuff. But it was like, <laughs> the thing was just like strutting around. I don't know. It reminded me kind of of like a horse more oh. than an anteater. I also saw a giraffe, but I, I still don't know what sound a giraffe makes because it was too far away. I couldn't hear it. I don't have giraffe sounds on here. It sucks. What do they sound like anyway? I don't really let's, know. Let's go look it up. What I drop do they along with therapy sound user. like? <laughs> okay, giraffe. It's a great uh, thing to do for uh, anyone's. <laughs> Absolutely. We have to know. We've already brought it up before on the podcast. We have to talk about it. No, I don't think we did. I posted something in the ABMA chat. 
No, we've, we've talked about it here because you wanted Scott to do a giraffe noise. I mean, he couldn't. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God, they sound Half fucking terrifying. Things, we're always disappointed, bro. They sound like, fucking awful. Really? <laughs> do you remember the same video awful. that I did? Like, is it, like, high-pitched or something? I'm going to look this up. <laughs> it's just like, oh, oh. Yeah, it just sounds oh, like it's yelling. Oh. oh. He's yelling. Oh. Like a goat. Oh, man. Yeah, kind of. It's just like a yelling horse. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Nice. Not very fun. It literally just sounds like some guy talking. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. Like he's like, Mom. That's crazy. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Mom, that's mom, the horse mother constantly. Mom, mom, the very neurotic mom. species. Holy <laughs> shit! Mom, can I go to Bobby's house? Mom, <laughs> it's crazy. Oh my god! Too bad for the giraffe wow. now. Mom, mom. <laughs> okay. You know what it sounds like? It sounds, just... like sounds like somebody like it's like when you when you like brush your teeth. I don't do this. I don't know. Does anybody actually do this? You gargle your toothpaste and shit? No. I gargle some um, other things, other times. Um, do you yeah, want to it. expand on that? Uh, sure. Yeah, actually, when I'm at, when I'm like in a dance class, I don't know how I figured this out, but I get like really overheated and like, I don't have asthma, but I have something that's like similar to asthma, but not as bad. And so like, if I get really overheated, like, I can't just drink water. I have to drink, like, I have to put, like, green tea powder in my water, and it helps for some reason. It's like a, like, relaxes the vocal cords or some shit. And I realized I found out that if I <laughs> your, your audio gargle just, it. Your audio was getting, was getting, uh, oh, okay, was getting sorry. There. I put green Gargled tea powder. Gargled audio. Yeah. <laughs> Long story what? short. Where do you I put green tea I powder? Figured out in my water that I that I take what? to dance class, and then I, I thought you were going to say gargle something else, and it like what? Yeah, I thought you were going to say balls. Like this oh, is I, a much longer story than oh. I was expecting. <laughs> not saying that you do that; no. it's just a natural joke. Wait, that, or, that or like do you gargle dry pumped. matcha? No, it's in my water bottle, Scott. Oh, okay. I put okay. it in. Well, that's water normal. Bottle. Oh God, you can't gargle dry matcha. That's horrible. That's you like that's choke and the gargle. You'd have you need to make sure you have enough saliva in order to gargle like dry a dry powder. Yeah. That'd be weird. Yeah. Oh, God, oh, oh, oh. That's what I thought together. they were saying. Okay. <laughs> wow. Fuck y'all. Yep. Can you talk about something else? <laughs> I don't have anything else. Is there, isn't there more news? Is there any more any more news? Any more Joe's? To cover? I don't know. More Joe's. Do we have any more like Joe, Joe wanted to talk Joe, Joe about fucking his, He wanted to talk about this speech that Biden gave, but I didn't watch the speech. And you guys did, and you said he was t- sound like an old man. Yeah, I, mean, I tried to. Isn't he? I, isn't he an old man? Well, he oh, gave up like a billion dollars to Israel. Yeah, fucking the yeah. other day for weapons. Like here's the thing. Like we were looking at the different counties in Massachusetts, Middlesex County, the county of which Joe's hometown of Lowell, Massachusetts, is gives forty one million. A year to Israel. Suffolk County, where we are right now, gives $16 million. Fucking uh, Northwick F- County, where I'm from, gives something like, I forget what it was. I think it was 21 or something. Anyways, combined together, it's $128 million that Massachusetts alone gives to Israel for weapons. Madness. That's why we can't have nice things. That's why we don't have good streets or public transportation or sh- like fucking public programs. It's because our government... Is taking the money that could be allocated to actually fund a, a, a real social democracy uh, and are giving it to uh, a, a, an apartheid state to continue their genocidal operations. You'll, you'll, you're not surprised to see it is how I'll put it. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. So that's more news. It's yeah. not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhat related to that is that I was really annoyed because I don't know why it seems like this is a common thing people do to try and dunk on people. I see people be like, oh, all these like left people are supporting Palestine because they think it's like really progressive and like supports like gay rights. But then they're like, haha, actually the Palestinians are like really okay. like. Yeah. Socially conservative, and I, and I was just like, "Why does that matter?" I don't know. It was like, just like this so is the most straw man argument. I don't think anybody actually shares that opinion that like because the Palestinians are 
you know, relatively not as socially progressive on LGBTQ rights that like we should stop supporting them. Like, what the fuck are you? What? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> uh, maybe yeah, this is an overly simplistic view of things, but I would like people to stop being killed. Uh, because in general, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, I would just like them to stop trying to like continuously smush all these people into a place and do bad things to them. I don't know, but I also like I I frequent like this like subreddit called like political compass memes. I do it just to like mainly to make myself sad, but also I guess to like try and get out of my like social media bubble of like always seeing things that might slightly agree with me. But then it also gets like shit like that where it's like. I don't care if they, like, don't support LGBTQ rights. Like, they're not on the level of caring about that because they got other shit to worry about. Like, I don't... And if that becomes a problem, if after they're liberated, we'll deal with it. Like... (laughs) Yeah, you... People don't have to be flawless right now. They don't have to be, like, maximally woke to deserve not death. They need to be given a chance. And yeah. they're not being given a chance. So. I mean, maybe it's a straw man of a straw man where they're like making up this argument and they know it's not real because because they're gonna piss people like me off. That I've been, I also just don't know. Like I feel I I don't know. No, it's it's a good thing to bring up. No, it's an argument I've seen made by not just Reddit shit posters. <sighs> God, that's I, I I almost wish it was just Reddit shit posters. I mean, that's basically what the CIA is doing right now. It's like hmm. it's better to do like gay mexican american drone strikes that's been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder yeah then uh and imposter syndrome yeah. to like yeah. have class solidarity so is that identity politics or is it just like yeah that's weird, identity weird politics. like intersectionality politics like it's I mean, I would put it under, like, fucking, like, woke culture, because, like, woke culture is the thing that is, like, the least stable out of anything, so. Mm -hmm. It's, like, woke culture, but there's, like, nothing, I'm assuming there's, like, no positive force behind it. Is there any? Yeah, no, it's the CIA behind it. Yeah, no, you're right. (laughs) I can understand, at least, as a very anxious person. exploitation of woke culture. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, as a very anxious person, I can understand... And I and I do this often where I'm just like afraid of like doing anything because it might be bad about something. I mean, I'm better about this now, but it's just like, you know, there's so many people you could like upset about some things and I don't know what I'm talking about, never mind. <laughs> like, it's just saying that like it's annoying because it's like I could be anxious about all these things, about like forgetting about this one group of people and then I'm like, shit, I forget about that thing and now everybody thinks I'm an asshole. But I don't think that's how most people think that's just how Twitter people just act sometimes. I don't know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, Twitter is not like a, I don't know what I'm talking about. Not a realistic... Uh, I'm rolling away from my desk. Full of reasonable change. <laughs> <laughs> and to be clear, identity politics are valid if combined with, you know, class solidarity. It's just when they're divorced from it that they become dumb. Well, that's yeah, that's why I said world culture instead of cla- uh, uh, identity politics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Culture. yeah. Well, the I think the issue identity when identity politics are leveraged against the working class because oh yeah they are presented in this framework of like pro individuality. All right, let me start that sentence over. I feel I feel your intent. Do it. My brain was just like broken when we were recording. So here's what I was trying to say. If we define identity as the set of qualities and characteristics inherent to a person, those which simply are, which can't be taught or altered, but only masked, even then we would be remiss to exclude class from our definition. The prevailing ideology would have us think, rightly, that individuals with dark skin or gender dysphoria or major depressive disorder or paraplegia are all deserving of the same humane treatment as their light-skinned, cisgender, contented, able-bodied fellows. This is not possible in a society which prioritizes the profit margin over the welfare of its citizens. Striving only for equal opportunity under capitalism offers us, at most, a more uniform struggle for survival. This would, nonetheless, be a considerable step toward building a unified working class party to take on the capitalist class. The only minority truly deserving of less than it takes from us. 
If we instead ignore the class element and only embrace whatever characteristics marginalize us or worsen our exploitation, then we're further factionalizing the working class. Conservatives recognize this factionalization and, having embraced quote-unquote traditional values within the capitalist system, e.g. enforcement of white, heterosexual, Protestant, colonialist norms, wield their own collective power against liberals who recognize oppression on a purely identitarian basis. A Marxian approach incorporates our understanding of antagonisms on social and material bases, as well as the lessons we learn in the process of organizing to resolve those contradictions. I'm going to be very clear about this. Solutions founded on class reductionism or on identitarian neoliberalism will be insufficient to address our material needs. We will never be capable of liberating the masses by developing a more outwardly representative form of capitalism. An undemocratic system in which the majority of wealth is held by a minority of people can only be sustained, by its very nature, through the exploitation of the working masses, regardless of that which contributes to a particular flavor of oppression. But, just as Mao warns us, we cannot fall into the dogmatism that would have us dismiss temporary or otherwise incomplete forms of support, such as reparations, for the most vulnerable among us. Spend emotional capital wisely. Get involved in the work that yields more than the sum of its parts. Well, it only succeeds in driving people further apart from each other, right? So it's yeah. sort of an anti-solidarity effect. I don't know if this is exactly what you mean, but this reminds me of the thing I was talking about a couple of days ago about, like, MOGAI stuff. About how, like... MOGAI. I, I forget what that stands for, but it's basically, like, the, the Tumblr stuff people were doing with, like, all the different, like... Oh, Tumblr. Kins and, um, like, different, like, oh, very specific drag, sexual and people. gender identities, yeah. And I said the problem with that, I guess, is that, like, once you get so specific that you're like, oh, I am, like, the only person in the world on this website who has this thing, then you're like, you can't really make any solidarity out of that because you're just focusing on everybody's differences. But don't all of those dragon people go on Tumblr to find other dragon people? Oh, yeah, yeah, they do. It's just that... Not, not talking about the dragon people specifically. They can do whatever they okay. I mean, you know, like, <laughs> more like the very specific gender identities and sexualities that are like, mm. that like mean that there's no real way to kind of come together and like focus on what you have in common because you're spending so much time trying to like describe your own individual experience. If you want to look at identity politics in the most Marxist way that I could explain it, we have to reduce antagonisms between individuals within the working class in order to have a cohesive working class. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've talked about this before. No, yeah. I don't know about on the pod, but you've talked about it. And I think that's like probably the best interpretation of it. Yeah. Because if you're if you're not doing that, then you're still creating a hierarchy of human beings. Alien or anarchist degrees. Love it. My brain's not working. My brain's broken. Oh no. Oh, no. We have a case of broke bread. Oh, no. I already oh, no. said everything I needed to say. <laughs> yes, we did. Yes. You, did. you did a good we got job. You. Yeah. We got you. All right. <laughs> very, very good job. A clap. I'm just trying to... I'm not used to having such a short episode, and now I'm just... Filling in with garbage. <laughs> well, you can just stop right now. It's like, an empty, garbage. It's, like, it's like an uh. empty sausage casing, and I'm just, like, putting <laughs> words in there. Yeah, it's like a sausage Hell casing, yeah. but it's, like, not filled enough, so it's just kind of floppy. Hell of a just, yeah, it's just flaccid. Sort of like... We have a flaccid <laughs> not just, not that. I mean, it's like, it's like a pillow you have, but, like, it's like it... Um, you slept in the middle of it too many times. And now Honestly, like, that's, that's <laughs> part of what's been... That's part of what's been affecting me is fucking... I have this little red pillow that I love that's not even, like, for sleeping. <laughs> and great. it's still dry. Like, Carlene was very kind, and she washed all the pillows and masks while I was at work. And the pillow is still drying, and I've been trying to sleep on other pillows. And, like, yesterday <laughs> I just had a fucking migraine all day. And oh. today, apparently... I'm just filling a flaccid sausage with identity politics, so I'm struggling. But I'm here. I'm. 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 I'll be okay. But, but, do you know what I mean when I say like, like, like a, you know you know what I mean though? Like I'm saying like the pillow that's like kind of like has a valley in the middle because that's where your head goes, and yeah. then you can kind of like it's not like a big poofy thing. You just kind of, kind of like flop it around. It sort of bends in the middle. You know. Yeah. 
That's what yeah. I'm talking about when I say an underfilled sausage. That's what I'm imagining, at least. <sighs> Lay yeah. your head on a sausage. <laughs> Lay your head down on a sausage. <laughs> Put your head in that sausage. <laughs> oh, my God. Hold me now. <laughs> I'm uh, six feet from the sausage. Oh, God. <laughs> Help us. Anyways. Yeah. Is that, is that it? We're going to stop now? <laughs> yeah. That's it. I, I, I command it. Oh, Ooh. I was literally going to. Anyways, yeah. It's Woo. Uh, really impressive how shitty it is. I know. Oh, Got to bring that one back. Um, my name is Scott. My other name is Sweaty Wife. I have Sweet half. Wife. Ooh, wife. I have half of an album done, and I might start releasing some songs from it. Uh, yeah, that's it. You can find my music at SoundCloud, Sweaty Wife, Bandcamp, Sweaty Wife. You can find me on Instagram at Sweaty Wife, and you can find me on Twitter at Death Mullet. Anybody else would like to go? Sorry. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Don't call me that. Sarah or Ellie. <laughs> I'll uh, bleep it. Go. Yes, bleep uh, that. <laughs> yes. Sarah or butt person? The first. <laughs> yeah. Butt person. Or butt rich person. Or butt person. Butt person. <laughs> what language? What, what accent song. is that supposed to be? It's not. It's not a real but accent. It's song. just. It's, it's just. Just, uh, uh, just rolling you know, my tongue. Something along the lines. Like, of every like, 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 my name like, is like, a butt person. Okay. <laughs> It's like, like French, vaguely like and French and like Mexican, or I was gonna say like um like Swedish or something. Whatever <laughs> it is, it's the least racist accent. <laughs> 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 least racist ones are the ones that aren't even tied to a particular ethnicity or race. They're so big, you can't yeah. even. Talk. Yeah, you yeah. should go. Yes, like when people uh, like to complain about the Swedish the stuff. Yes, I am Sarah. You can't find me in places. Because my Instagram is primarily used for stalking one particular person, and that's it. What? That does. No, it's not important. Don't worry. That's all I use Instagram for now. Anyway, um, yeah, you can't find me anymore. Any anymore? Anywhere. <laughs> you are dead. <laughs> so good luck with that. Love a chat with you. Anyway, good night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Black person. I am a butt person. person. No, I am. You don't have to refer to yourself as anything other than butt person. Butt person. <laughs> I mean, if people care, they listen to my segment. I said my name there, so that's fine. You can't uh, you can't find me, but if you want a psychic reading, you can email my headmate, Chava, at... Here we go. Uh, you got and Jullard yep. at Tanagra. His uh, eyes uncovered! That's right. That's right, folks. Don I'm going to play that every with episode. With his eyes you, uncovered you part. To. That's the whole thing. I'm going to play that I every time you bring, this, you bring up her email. I really so. want you to, and I'm so glad <laughs> that you have the thing. Yes, darmokxjalad at gmail.com. D-A-R-M-O-K-X-J-A-L-A-D at gmail.com. Is that supposed to like be like, a, like an anagram or something? Confidential. It's a... It's a... <sighs> No, no it's just like it's a uh, Jalad at Tanagra. It's literally, it's, it's literally what it's from. I'm playing with literally what it's from. It's I know. I'm just saying it's, it's the kind of episode. thing where it's like an anagram because it sounds not. It's so not the, the the the, the species <laughs> speaks in metaphors, and so yes. Darmok at Jalak means it's like it conveys like. Yeah. And uh, I'm Jesse, and you can <laughs> find me. <laughs> Star Trek. My music <laughs> at soundcloud.com slash contingents Boston. Remember to hit up comrade-rosie.org. Click get involved. It's like one or more mutual aid groups to donate your time, money, and or labor to because people really need your help right now. <sighs> yeah. And what do we say every week? Well, we say that we're no, on we Patreon have, yeah. at Epic oh, yeah, Incredulity. Sorry. You can find us <laughs> on Twitter and Instagram at Epic Incredulity. You can and also find us on week. Facebook, YouTube. YouTube. You can get involved in the local unionizing mutual aid, the housing effort, whatever. The uh, pro-masking effort. I don't know. Those are probably going to pop up Mask soon. Uh, uh, pro-Palestinian. 
Protest? Don't go to work and punch don't people who refuse to wear work. a mask. Don't go to my work. <laughs> don't you bother told me. Us basically where it is. You could probably find it. Oh, I didn't. Well, Anyways. People don't know what you look like, so <sighs> They don't yet. Uh, every week we say... <laughs> we say Greek penis. We say Greek penis. Greek yep, that's penis. exactly what we Greek say. You got penis. it. You got it. Every you week we say Greek time. penis. We <laughs> say... <laughs> There's no video of President Trump sucking a ding dong. Not yet. And so what if there was? was. <laughs> so what if there was? But tank do. So what tank do? Fuck you but guys. That's your epoch. God. <laughs> That's epoch. It's over. There. I'm talked the fuck out. Yeah, me too. We got some talk the fuck out. Yeah, you. Yeah. I've talked just out heads. been really but anxious lately and song. very hypercritical of myself and everybody else. And it's I don't know why and I want it to stop and I, I don't like it and it's making me feel like shit. And then I'm becoming hypercritical of how hypercritical I'm of other people. Listeners My in the Boston no. <coughs> area, if this please resonates help. with you, please yeah. yeah. Please send an email to mentalhealth at bostondsa.org <laughs> and join our working group so that we can give you Guesses? comradely tips on how to cope with the desire to be overly critical of yourself and also to... <clears throat> Uh, oh yeah did, did did we talk about how the Bill and Melinda Gates are breaking up who gives a shit I don't, care. I don't know who cares I don't, I don't care uh, it was interesting for like one day and then it Epstein was like Epstein didn't kill himself whatever Bill Gates did it <laughs> Epstein, Epstein did not and kill himself. himself. Epstein didn't chill himself. Mm. Epstein didn't Epstein uh, chill himself. Epstein, Epstein didn't, didn't sleep with kill uh, Jill Biden himself. I, I don't know if anybody saw this funny, <laughs> but I when he said like that did anything did did Joe get to anything else? Did like Joe if Joe gave us stuff and I was like, Oh yeah, those are the Joe off instructions. <laughs> Uh, Those instructions on how we should jerk off, jerk him off. No, for the instructions uh, for what to cover in the podcast, you creep. How yeah, to you creep. Off. Obviously. <laughs> All right. All right. That's enough. This All is right. what, this is wait, wait, what wait. I was talking about. In the- let me get. Let me get one. Uh, let me get an animal noise. Yeah, I know you're gonna. Ask Maybe that. You'll, do a loon, perhaps. I don't have a loon? What the fuck? Yeah, do the loon if you have a loon. I don't have a loon. Do the loon again. The loon is on the Swedish. Do you have the blue-footed booby? No. Nobody's got a big tit. <laughs> <laughs> it was some kind of bird. Noise. Noise. I like that kind of bird. Wait. <laughs> Those are her oh, what about a liar uh, bird? You have a liar bird? Yeah. What is a liar bird? What are you talking about? It's the one that like can do any noise. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't like, have like a, car a liar bird uh, soundboard. I apologize. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> Squid. I have everyday spaces, though. Are we done now? I don't want to be done now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How do I leave Carlene again? handed me squirrel. Oh, yeah. So I can't even reach my fucking keyboard. I want Damn to do it, it right this time. Jesse, I don't have a I don't have a hang up button.
Alright, hold on. Okay. We're gonna stop it. We're gonna stop it. We're gonna do it. Just gonna learn on the circle. Okay.